Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Juma Mubarak to you all. Bismillah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'ufiruhu. Wa na'udhu billahi min shuroori anfusina wa min sayyati amalina. Man yadihi allahu falamudilla lah wa man yudlilhu falahadiyala. Wa ashadu wa la ilaha illa Allah wahtahu la sharika lah. Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh. All praise is due to Allah from whom we seek help and forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the evil of our own souls and from those of our bad deeds. Whomsoever Allah guides will never be led astray. Whomsoever Allah leads astray, no one can I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, the one who has no partner. I bear witness that the Prophet Muhammad is Allah's true servant and messenger. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqu Allah haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. O ye who believe, be mindful of Allah. Be mindful of Allah in the way that Allah deserves and do not die except in a state of full submission to Allah. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqu Allah wa qulu qawlan sadeedha yuslih lakum a'amalakum wa yawfir lakum dunubakum. Wa man yutillaha wa rasooluhu faqad faza fawzan azima. O ye who believe, be mindful of Allah. Be mindful of Allah and say that which is right and speak the truth. Allah will bless your deeds for you or forgive your sins. And whosoever obeys Allah, the Messenger of Allah, has truly achieved a great triumph. Rabbi Shrahli Sadri wa Sili Amri wa Halul Ufatim Lisani of Kauli Subhanaka la ilmanana illa ma'alam tana inna ka anta yadi. I pray that may Allah open my chest, make easy for me this task, and loosen the knots of my tongue that this speech and this khutbah may be understood. And glory be to you alone, Allah, glory be to you, that we have no knowledge except that which you have given us and have taught us. Verily, it is you who are the all-knowing, the all-wise. So again, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I was thinking about this week in terms of for the khutbah and was reflecting on a khutbah I had uh, the blessing to be able to participate in and, and witness uh, in the uh, prison when I went to go uh, work with our Muslim brothers that are incarcerated. And the khatib, who was you know, one of the, 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 the incarcerated Muslims there, gave the khutbah on this, uh, this, this verse from Surah Al-Anqabu, where Allah tell, tells um, the believers that the parable of those who make protectors or who take protectors or awliya apart from Allah is that of a spider that makes its house or its bait, it makes its house. And truly the frailest of houses is the spider's house, if they knew. And I thought about this this, uh, this verse for some time and thought about the aspect of this spider's web and a very simple, almost, you know, just parable in, in the sense of this comparison of those who take their protectors uh, other than Allah compared to the houses and, and, and the houses that are uh, of the frailest make or the frailest ones uh, are those of the spiders and having this kind of comparison there. And so I thought to myself in a sense, how would it look like if we saw ourself or how I saw myself as the spider um, and thinking about that when the Quran is talking about those who take protectors apart from Allah, those who take awliya apart from Allah, what does this mean? What does this, what does this look like? And, and, and what, what is there? Oftentimes we see spider webs in our homes. We see them uh, in the corners, you know, just sometimes we see them as a nuisance or we see them out in nature, very beautifully articulated and uh, constructed. Uh, and so they're, they're an everyday kind of an encounter for many of us. And, and just thinking about that, how often we pass these by or how often we maybe brush them aside or uh, push them aside, but how often have we maybe seen ourselves in those spiders and the webs or in the spider itself, especially in light of this parable where Allah lifts up of those who take protectors other than Allah, having this comparison to the spider, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the spider that makes its house and, and it's, uh, it's the frailty of this house um, is its, uh, its, its marked difference between that of other houses. And so, thinking about this, we thought first and foremost, what does it mean to take protectors other than Allah? And um, in the Quran, we look at how uh, Allah lifts up that it's not just those who take uh, other protectors from uh, other than Allah in terms of just gods or just, you know, other um, idols or things like that. 
but those who take humans as protectors, those who take uh, Shayatin or Shaitan as a protector uh, or as a friend, those who take other gods besides Allah as protectors. Surah Kahf tells uh, us about this aspect of taking Shaitan as a uh, as a protector when Allah says that, and recall when we send to the angels, prostrate yourselves before Adam, and all of them fell prostrate except Iblis, that he was one of the jinn and had so disobeyed the command of his Lord, and asks them, will you then take him, take Shaitan, take Iblis, uh, as, and his progeny as your guardians? Will you take them as your awliya, rather than me, even though they are your open enemies? Surah Tawbah tells us of taking protectors of people other than Allah, taking protectors uh, for, of individuals um, and, and putting all of our eggs in that basket apart from Allah. And Surah Tawbah says that, O oh, ye who believe, do not take your fathers or your brothers or siblings as allies or awliya if they have preferred disbelief over belief. And Surah Al-Baqarah tells us of taking, a, taking partners of Allah, of taking partners or protectors of Allah with other than Allah, and ascribing divinity to other things other than Allah. That Surah Al-Baqarah tells us that Allah is the protector of those who believe, is the ally of those who believe, that he brings them out of the depths of darkness and into the light. And for those who disbelieve, their allies are false gods who take them from the light into the depths of the darkness. And thinking about what this protection means when we take a protector other than Allah, uh, it's the, it doesn't necessarily just have to be in a theological sense. Taking protector of Allah can be a very uh, human interaction can be very transactional, it can be all across our, our human experience. And so as the, the first part of this verse repeats to us that those who take protectors um, other than Allah um, brings us to the space when we take into consideration when Allah has given us these warnings of not taking other who, others as protectors other than Allah in other spaces, whether it is other human beings, whether it is other um, uh, idols or uh, things that have been ascribed divinity, or even if it is uh, the adversary, the, the shaitan, or at least uh, to not take these as protectors because of the fact that Allah is the ultimate protector. Allah is al-wali. Uh, Allah is the one who uh, not only is uh, the friend, the ally, but the one in whom we seek this protection, the one from whom this most perfect protection, friendship, and companionship emanates. And through, by extension, uh, from Allah, we also have the Prophet Sallallahu and the community of believers that are lift, lifted up as the true protectors for Muslims in the human realm. Uh, whereas those who disbelieve seek protection from their idols, or those who disbelieve seek protection from shaitan, or from the the the, uh, the other shayateen that, that are putting things in the way, uh, uh, distractions in the way back to Allah. Um, as well as each other. And so thinking about that, we, we kind of may, may speak about this in very categorical terms that, oh, the community of believers are the only true protectors for Muslims in the human realms. And we probably know in our own examples, in our own lives, how Muslims in our own communities, maybe even ourselves, uh, may not have been the best protectors for people, may have actually been the cause of harm for so many other people. And so thinking about that, even as Muslims, even as those who consider ourselves as community, as as part of that community of believers, how sometimes we and sometimes our community members, our fellow uh, brothers and sisters, might also be outside of that category of uh, true protectors. We may f uh, not live up to that responsibility. We see the uh, difference that, uh, that Allah lifts up in the Quran when you have this interaction of a uh, people that say, you know, uh, we have believed, and Allah tells them that. No, respond back that you've not believed, rather say you've submitted, that belief has not yet entered your heart. And thinking about belief as the next part, that, that part of Iman being the next part of uh, the initial aspect of Islam. And so having this true protection coming in and thinking about what does it mean to seek uh, protection? What does it mean to seek that allyship? What does it mean to take protectors of folks that the, the, the best of those who can be provided to us, the best of that which can be provided would be from uh, not just not only Allah, but by extension, the Prophet Sallallahu and by extension, the community of believers, those who are true in their belief, those who are sincere in their belief, um, who are not 
harming other people and who are not. In our world, we see this as, as much taking protectors um, from other things other than Allah. And we, we, like I said, we can see it in ourselves first and foremost, but we may see it as well, not too far um, from our own uh, immediate kind of vicinity that we see how we may take up our protectors uh, other than Allah in, in our wealth, in our job, in our family, in our uh, property, in our income, and uh, in our skill set, and in ourselves, all these different things that when we ask ourselves that, what do we feel like our foundation is built on? And we, we reflect that how much of it is actually things that are, um, you know, things that we've earned or things that are transactional, things that are quantitative, rather than things that are more spiritual, more in, uh, innate, and more qualitative, in essence. And so thinking about that, before we even start to say like, hey, I need to find all my different protectors all here and there, ask, ask yourself first and foremost that um, what, what are we doing as a way of providing that protection for ourselves? Well, who do we take as our protector? Who, where, where do we have our treasure kind of stored up? And we think about uh, in, the, in the Bible, in, in, in the Gospel of Matthew, you have a, a, a parable or you have a, a kind of uh, admonition lifted up by Esau, uh, it's not like by Jesus that said, you know, don't store up for yourself treasures on earth where moths and vermin can come and destroy and where thieves can break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and vermin don't destroy and where thieves and don't break in and steal. For where your treasure is, your heart will be there as well. So thinking for ourselves, where is our heart? Um, where Where is that treasure that we do put in? Do we, is our treasure... Uh, in the iman that we have, the belief in Allah and the belief in the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, uh, or is our treasure is the thing that we value the most, that which we see in our bank account, or that which we see um, on underneath our email signature as our title or anything like that. So thinking about what are, what do, who do we take as our protector that, uh, you know, in one day as, as we relate back here to the spider's web, that a spider's web is fairly frail. It can come and go and uh, be, you know, blown down or taken down fairly quickly. In, in what way do we have those things, those different protectors uh, as ascribed as our home, like ascribed as our main protector? And do we recognize the frailty of it? So thinking about the next aspect of this verse where you have the prote taking protectors of uh, anything else other than Allah, uh, as the verse talks about that, uh, the parable of those who take protectors apart from Allah is that of the spider that makes its house. Um, and so, and that truly the frailest of houses is the spider's house if they knew. So what does a house provide? If we look at the next part of this and seeing ourselves in the spider, that what does a house provide? A house generally provides shelter, generally provides security, protection, um, provides a variety of other things. It provides you know, room for growth, provides some kind of stability, provides a variety of things. And thinking about does a spider's house provide that um, in, in general? You know, you'll, you'll maybe say like, oh, I've had a spider's cobweb in my corner or in my attic for who knows how long. But generally speaking, a spider's house maybe doesn't really provide all of these different things in terms of shelter, protection, security. Uh, we, we, we so often see that a spider's house, especially whether indoors or outdoors, is subject to all the elements um, when it is outside in, in a tree or uh, around something else that whether rain or wind or anything else that comes, it, it, it's, it's fair game. It's not covered by anything else. It is just the web in and of itself. And when it is in your windowsill and it's just a corner, there's nothing really much protecting it from, uh, from the broom that you're maybe about to sweep on it. So thinking about that, this, this spider's house doesn't necessarily provide this kind of protection. It's there. Uh, it's, it, it's, it's, one, uh, it, it, it's one that has been established, but it's, and it's, it's been secure. But thinking about does it truly provide all these elements? Does it truly provide shelter, protection, security? Not that it doesn't provide maybe an essence of these. It maybe provides some semblance of shelter where the spider can sit and rest. It may provide some semblance of protection if something, uh, a foreign object or something that uh, comes to uh, within the vicinity gets trapped in it. It may pro provide that kind of semblance of security uh, where something else that might come and, and, and get caught in it. But overall, it's a very flimsy kind of a material. It's it's not a uh, it, it it's not something that's like you know you have a 
gigantic house that's built of all these different bricks or all these different reinforced concrete or whatnot that would take some time to take down it it, it just takes one kind of sweep and it's you know it's uh, out of the way it's dust um and think about the relation of this house the metaphor of this house to uh to that of a true protector so we see the comparison of true protectors being made to that of houses or of, of this house and the spider's house has been lifted up but true protectors on the other hand or these houses stable houses actually provide to the contrary nourishment they provide that shelter they do provide security whereas false protectors do not they're afflicted with various forms of uh, not just destruction not just the things that do hit at uh, anybody in life um, whether they have a sturdy house or whether they have a, a flimsy kind of space that they're in they they are also subject to those elements they're subject to those different trials and tribulations but those uh, dwellings come down very much easier they're easier to knock down like in in this case the, sp the spider's web and so we think about that if you have this stable kind of a home even if it has a little bit of support or uh, you know even some branches or whatever it may be if a strong wind or something else comes about, um, the spider's web wouldn't maybe have so much of a chance in, 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 in certain, some of these certain elements, but in other aspects, maybe the stronger dwelling would. And so you, you kind of take it back to our metaphor and our lives here as human beings that when we think that, oh, we, I've got this gigantic house, I've got you know, all of these different things, I've got these cars, I've got my income coming, I've got you know, my children, I've got all this stability, we don't see ourselves as a spider because we see it as very flimsy. But when we see ourselves as the spider and we zoom out on our own selves and seeing this from a more celestial perspective, seeing this from a more spiritual dimension, seeing this from the uh, the admonition that Allah is giving us from Allah's perspective, we're we're not even like the spider. We're even we're even you know more insignificant in that sense. And that and our homes and our concrete and all of this stuff is is even more so just as flimsy there. Um, you have this element as well within this protection that we see ourselves as uh, sometimes you know, we, we, when we take protectors other than Allah, we talk about not just the external factors, we also talk about those of us who take ourselves as, as, as protectors that as Surah Nisa talks about taking, doing worship, doing different acts of char charity or service or whatnot solely for the sake of personal gain and solely to be seen um, and solely for our own image. And seeing how in, in and of itself, things like that, doing those worship uh, acts, doing those services, doing that charity, but just to be seen just for selfish reasons in and of itself is also a form of taking that protection in something other than Allah. It's a form of that kind of polytheism in, in a way of uh, setting up something besides Allah um, because you're setting it for yourself. You're, you're, you're feeding your own ego. You're putting it into yourself and, and, and seeing that when we take protectors of things other than Allah, um, it's not just those that are external. Sometimes we, it, it's our own ego that, that is there. And Allah tells us that these are parables that have been, that have been set forth for humanity, but none will understand except those who are people of knowledge or those who reflect, those who are people who think. Um, and when we think about the spider's web, we think about our own personal webs, we, 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 we sit down and we talk about this aspect that when we look at a spider's web, um, just from the external point, from our perspective, it looks flimsy, even if it's a gigantic, uh, you know, very ornate kind of, uh, of a web. It's not something a broom probably couldn't take out or, or anything else like a little slipper couldn't remove or whatnot. But we think about the scientific metaphor and the scientific facts around what, what is made up in a spider's web. Uh, the Science Magazine, I believe, talked about that you have uh, a spider's web that is uh, the, the silk of spider web or some spider's webs um, is uh, five times stronger than steel. And if it was human size because of the microfibers and because of it on a uh, micro, uh, microscopic level, that if it was human size, it, it might be tough enough to actually, you know, stop a jetliner, stop and stop a plane. That 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 fiber, uh, that fiber of a spider web is actually very strong, um, in 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 terms of its, uh, in in terms of its elemental aspect. But when it's on in 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 the size that it is, it appears very flimsy. Yet its element is very strong. And you think about uh, this aspect. That think of how small and minuscule spiders' homes are. 
uh, yet how often, how detailed and how diligent they are. Uh, I was reading that it takes about 30 to 60 minutes for spiders to build a web and to weave a web. But even though they're really strong, even though the material is so strong, they don't really last for that long. You know, wind will happen, rain will happen, animals maybe walk through it, humans maybe walk through it, and it just damages the web. And some spiders will build that web each and every day, each and every day, and will re-spin that web, re-spin that web. And when we see ourselves as those spiders, how often do we busy ourselves? If we see what are, what are our webs, what are we spinning that how often do we busy ourselves in spinning this web over and over and recognize that, you know, as we're spinning this, something's going to come. We think that we've just created this huge web. We've made everything here. It's really nice. It's all good. And then all of a sudden something else hits it. And, you know, it's, 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 it, 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 it almost collapses in a sense, but we, we continue to try and spin. We continue to try and spin uh, but we may be ignorant of the fact that this isn't all that is there. We may we may become enamored with, oh, look at what I spun, or hey, look what just landed in my net. Look at all these different things. Look how big this net is. It, we, we feel, you know, very secure. We feel like, oh, I've got all this. Like, I don't have to worry about those different tribulations, those different things. I'm all set. Like, I, we, we get stuck in our own silo. And yet, when we think about what our faith means, what is the essence of Islam? What is the essence of being a Muslim? At its core, it's one of relinquishing this kind of control. It's relinquishing this kind of uh, this aspect uh, of it's this aspect of letting go. Um, this aspect, when we say submission, it's not just you know just plain and simple obedience. It's it's uh, submission to the fact that we are going through this journey of life. Yet the control of it is is one that we lift up to Allah. That we 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 honestly we have no control of what may happen, what not, what might not happen. But at least we can. Uh, live in a way that recognizes this, this, that we're cognizant of this. It doesn't mean that, oh, I just should give up spinning my web and just you know sit dormant and do nothing. It doesn't mean that we don't spin our web or that we don't tie our camel, but that when we do so, when we spin our webs, when we tie our camel, when we do the things that we are is part of our function, is part of just our human function to do, that we, at the end of the day, are content with and we know who our true protector is. We're content with that which we are doing, so long as we're doing it with the intentionality and the honesty that we do it with. But we also know that this is not indicative of or the complete picture of uh, what our human experience is going to be. That the web that we spin in this life, it might be a very difficult one. It might get knocked down each and every day. It might be one of a lot of adversity. It does not have to indicate what the what the web of the next life will be. That we what we spin in this life is not just being made into this nice web and right now that might get blown down the next minute or the next day, but is actually continuing to be spun for a home in the next life. And 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 these these deeds are not being left to waste. And so you think about the spider is one that is a, a, a minuscule kind of an insect. Sometimes we see big ones and we're like, oh my God, so big. But the reality is probably not, uh, you know, bigger than the palm of your hand. It's it's relatively smaller than you. And Surah Nur tells us that, do you not see that Allah is glorified by all that which is in the heavens and the earth, even for the birds as they are soaring in the air, that each of these creations, each of this creation knows instinctively their manner of prayer and their glorification. They know what they're supposed to do, their roles, and Allah has perfect knowledge of what they do. That even that spider, that minuscule spider that's spinning its web that we might brush aside, that we might, you know, look <laughs> look down upon in terms of like just being disgusted by or just whether in awe by or whatever it may be, that even that spider knows uh, has this connection to its creator, has a connection to Allah, that it knows what its role is. It knows what role it's playing in this life. It knows what it's there. It knows that it's going to build this, this home. It's going to build these things here. Uh, but it, as an insect, as an innate creation, has, still has that connection to Allah. Um, and when that net gets broken down, it builds it again. It builds it again, um, even if it may be in the same spot, even if it may be elsewhere. But it knows its purpose. It knows its function. It knows what its basic factory defaults are for survival. And thinking about for us, that when we see ourselves in this parable and in closing as we see ourselves in this verse that uh, those who take protectors other than all those who place their faith and place their protection uh, apart from Allah are, are those who 
take a, or, or is like one who um, is making their house like that of the spider, is like the spider that makes its house. And that truly the frailest of houses is the spider's house. But we see that the spider's house is also made of those strongest, of the strongest fibers, the strongest webs, the strongest individual kind of things that are there. And when we reflect on this, that when we, when we are constructing our own webs in our life, when we are putting this together, that we see what we are using to make this web. What mindset are we in when we are making our webs? Uh, are we uh, recognizing that this is a frail house? What we are doing is is frail. Our our bodies are frail. We're we're corporeally a very weak species. We we don't we we may not withstand certain things. Like we, we're generally not a strong uh, species, especially when we compare ourselves and put ourselves in that plane on the spiritual spiritual aspect. That when we see a spider, we see something insignificant, something that could be easily crushed or something that could be easily just put aside, yet we don't see ourselves at, uh, as those kinds of insects or those kinds of ants or spiders that when we zoom out and see really how small and how insignificant we are, that we recognize that whatever we're constructing here, it really is frail. It is frail, that the spider's house is a frail house, but that doesn't mean the spider is the frailest spider. The spider is an insignificant thing or the, it defines the spider by any means that Allah is not dissing the spider in this sense that, you know, the parable of those who take protectors apart from Allah uh, is that of a spider that makes its house. It just makes its house. Um, but truly the frailest house is a spider's house. And uh, it's not a disrespect to, you know, just a spider and, and what a spider, the spider has been lifted up for whatever its function is and the role that it plays, but the, the house that it makes, the, the, home that is makes is, is a frail one, is one that can be taken away. Uh, yet a spider has so much to offer um, to the environment, has so much to offer within even our own tradition. We have a, a chapter in the Quran named after Al-Ankabu, the, uh, the spider. We have a, a situation in the life of the Prophet where he and Abu Bakr are escaping um, you know, to Medina and take refuge in a cave and a spider spins a web uh, in, in the front of that cave and gives the impression that, oh, this is, you know, nobody could have gone in. There's a spider's web here. So thinking about that, the spider is not just, you know, debased as a uh, useless creation or whatnot because its home is frail. Um, rather, we see Allah lifting up that the spider knows what its role is, yet its, its house might be frail, but it's still playing its part. But we as humans sometimes think of ourselves as self-sufficient. We take other protectors other than Allah. We find other things. We recognize all these other things. And we put our eggs in that basket. We spin our webs from these different aspects. And so the source of our web is oftentimes our wealth, is oftentimes our children, is oftentimes our family, our homes, our jobs. All of these different things are the sources of our, uh, are the sources of our web. Whereas the source of the web that the spider knows is from Allah, is from itself and from Allah, uh, that what Allah has allotted to it and what Allah has given to it. And when we recognize that anything that we are spinning our web with is not our own doing, is not uh, just from that object, whether from our job or from any kind of uh, thing that you know can be qu uh, quantified, but is from Allah itself, our home can be as frail as it does look on the outside but the home that's within ourselves, the spiritual home, the home in which our soul dwells is one that is reinforced, strong, and that can't be broken down. That even if this life, it gets hit down in the next life, it's still continuing to be built up. So may Allah enable us to continue to spin our own webs, to recognize the source of our webs, to recognize the source of that which builds our homes is not of the concrete that we find outside, not of our jobs that we're uh, working at, not in uh, the families that uh, we're continuing to sustain, not just in the wealth that we are bringing in, but it is from Allah who is our true wali, is from Allah who is our true protector, from Allah who is our true abazak, the provider of all different things, and that uh, anything that we have in this life, whether it is taken away from us or it is continued to be given to us and given to us, uh, that it is indeed from Allah. We take Allah as a protector. We recognize that we really don't have anything to lose except uh, the relationship with Allah itself once we abandon that. And may Allah prevent us from ever having to get to that point of abandoning that relationship with Allah. And may Allah enable us to be a people that recognize that uh, we remember Allah in each of the things and each of the webs that we spin, each of the lives that we live, that everything in it, every good that we have of it, every essence of it is a blessing and from Allah. Um, and in the moments of difficulty, in the moments of trial, in the moments when things do get hard and difficult, that when those things are lost, when those things are given up, that 
those things uh, are, 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 are taken back away from us, but they are not indicative maybe of us as human beings, that they are uh, they are things that which we which we recognize Allah gives, Allah also takes away. And we maintain that relationship of Allah is not dependent upon that relationship with this object or this other element that's there. So may Allah enable us to continue to be people that strengthen ourselves, that continue to spin our webs, that continue to recognize that at the end of the day, our relationship with Allah is the biggest uh, source of our fabric and our biggest source of our silk that allows us to uh, create the strongest webs that we can. Inshallah, amin, and may Allah allow us to leave this Jummah better than we came into it. Rabbana taqabal minna, inna kanta sinil alim. Rabbana wa taqabal dua, rabbana firmi wa dua ladayya. Rabbil mu'minina, inna kum ishaab wa rahiru wa da'wana. Inna alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. Jazakir al-khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.